All right, so the plaid's home. There it is. I'm working on removing the front license plate. And it's over here, like everybody else says in 10,000 videos, you know, it has these um, stupid Penelope screws, you know, probably an Apple thing. And um, that just goes into those three holes. And I, re I just use uh, small vice grips to get them out and I didn't damage the paint on that. Not that it really matters, but I didn't want to damage the paint on that. And then here, there are two tape strips. There's lots of videos online, you can find them. And that's, I'm following a few of them. And I'm gonna link it below. So right now I'm using my heat gun to, not a very high setting, to um, heat this up as much as I can without melting anything. And then I'm gonna try to pull it off with uh, I have glide dental floss, you know, because, you know, that's, that's what it's for, right? And then, see if I can pull this off without any damage. This is the most nerve wracking part about it. And the car itself is good. Um, to be honest, this is the best Tesla I've gotten so far. So far, let's just uh, keep it that. The gaps aren't perfect. I've just seen the gap difference in the front here. Um, but it's better than, um, than the previous cars that I've had. Um, See if I can, I think this might be a little, slightly adjustable here with, um, I'm gonna show you real quick. So this gap is different than this gap, but this is also lower here. There's bumpers underneath here, rubber bumpers. You can screw in and out. So I'm gonna try to make it even. Let's see. Yeah, it's a little high on this side. Also a little high on that side. That's why they couldn't, they couldn't get it to be even, but you know, that's Tesla. Anyway, um, I'll let you know how this goes. I'm not gonna lie. It is the most nerve wracking job I've done so far. There it is. So this didn't have much, the lower one didn't have much contact. As you can tell, it came clean off, which is good. Um, I put a lot of heat on the front of the bracket, not so much on the paint, and waited for it to soak through the plastic, which takes a while because it's an insulator into the tape and the tape is pretty soft and then i started pulling away i tried to dental floss and it wanted to go through my fingers more than it wanted to go through the to the tape so then um when i pulled it off i was able to actually put my little pocket knife you know between the the not touching the paint between the the thing there so i cut that off and then that kind of just popped off the rest of it so there's a million different ways of doing this it just have to i put blue tape on this side, you know, painter's tape, on that side here, because as I was wedging it, I didn't want this to force itself into the paint. So, yeah, now it's clean up. I'm gonna heat this up some more, and then kind of rub it away, roll it away as they did in the videos, and then see if there's any clear coat damage, and then polish it if there is. That's where we are. The name of the game is keep it warm, but see I'm touching it so it's not that hot. So it's barely, it's almost to the point of like, ow. 
which is a very technical term. I hate rubbing paint like this. Tesla, chill, man, with this thing. The reason they have it is because it improves their front crash worthiness ever, ever so slightly. And they must have been on the edge of a, a score they wanted or something, I don't know. Or it's cheaper to produce them all the same than to produce them differently. Although the dealer could add this on, but good luck getting it centered. Not a dealer, service center. Anyway, I wish they didn't come with them. Not bad. Little mark right there, I'm not sure it's glue or not. We're gonna clean it all up and uh, go from there. All right, next step. All right, we're all done. There it is. Clean off the back of this thing too. That was more of a pain than the car. And uh, wipe it down with some BDEX, which is a quick detail. I don't think it's available anymore. I got it at a Corvette car show years and years and years ago and I got gallons of it. So it's an nice, awesome spray wax, but I'm not gonna actually do any polishing or anything because, well, it doesn't need it for one thing. And also this car is uh, gonna go away this weekend to get PPF. So I'm getting the front done, the um, A-pillars, mirrors, rocker panels. I already has some here, which is nice. And I'm getting it done here and stop the rear bumper. This is the most important part of the car because it's the only part that anybody's really gonna see. So wrapping up day one, there it is. Front license plate bracket removed. Oops, trying to, to show you here. I'm not gonna be able to. All right, there it is. That's been removed. I added the uh, a red decal over the chrome T in the front. Found a couple panel misalignments. That T is not quite centered. The gap next to the headlight and the nose there. It's a little tighter on this side than the other side. And I was able to make a slight adjustment, but not too much with the rubber stops. Uh, you know, typical Tesla stuff. Uh, the driver's door, this is the passenger's door, but this sticks out a little more than, than this one does on the other side. These are all the Tesla things that people have been complaining for years. And they have um, gotten a lot better, but they still... You know, not perfect. I'm not sure why they can't fix that for all these years, but it's the way it is. And uh, I put my license plate on it with a license plate frame and slightly, slightly longer screws because they're, they're thick to make up for the thickness of the frame. All the little details. Put my stuff in it that I used to have on the other car. You know, like a tire pump, tire uh, patch kit. You know, those little little things that you that you do for emergencies and stuff. And easy passes on there. Tomorrow morning goes for a state inspection because that's I won't do that. I'm not really sure why. And then Saturday I drop it off to get PPF. It's going to get a uh, full hood, fenders, uh, A-pillars, mirrors, rocker panels, behind the rear wheels, and top of the rear bumper, door edges, and door sills. A lot of stuff. But basically all the high impact areas. Pretty much what I had in the other car. So the other car had a half hood and being a white car where the PPF would stop, which would be like, you know, probably somewhere around here. It would, you know, there's a line they can always see, but on a white car, as it ages, it seems to get a little darker by the line. I haven't noticed it on those cars over there, the red ones, and um, maybe because of the color. Also, headlights and fog lights are getting covered. It keeps them from getting yellow anyway. So, so I'll have it back Tuesday. I have about 60 miles on it now, and, um, you know, so far, so good. I like the car. Um, but so quick review and I'll review more later, but quick review, um, what do I think of the car driving every day? You know, is it worth it over the model three performance? Well, yes and no. There are things that I miss about the model three performance that, uh, this car doesn't quite have the stocks, for example, I'll get used to it, but I, I don't, I don't love it. This, the stocks were, were good. Uh, they're very, very convenient, much quicker maybe because of the muscle memory and, and time will get used to this one. But my biggest pet peeve of the stockless is the high beams. Like I live on sort of country, not really, but you know, like, you know, away from the city. 
to lots of dark back roads. So lots of deer too. So I have, uh, I use the high beams all the time unless there's a car coming or I'm behind a, a car. So in this car, the high beams is a button in the steering wheel, a capacitive button that you have to hold for about a full second before it stays on the high beams. If I'm wrong about that, there's a shortcut, let me know, because I'd love to know. But, um, so that's kind of annoying to me because with the other one, it just pushes stock forward, bam, you got high beams, like quick and easy. This one's a little bit kind of a pain. If you put it on auto, auto high beams, um, you know, it flashes all over the place. It gets reflection back from the speed limit signs and stop signs and all that. It thinks it's another car and it goes back to low beams. It's kind of a pain. So that's one thing that's not awesome. I love this small uh, steering wheel on the Model 3 and it's a little bit thicker at the bottom. This one gets a little thinner at the bottom. It's kind of weird. And it's also bigger. Now here's a, here's a weird one. It has the instrument cluster in front of the steering wheel. And I thought that was like really cool that it had that, but now that I have it, I, I sit low with a low steering wheel. So it kind of gets in the way of that cluster. So I, the entire top of information that shows on there, which is like um, lights indicator and speed limit indicator. And you know, you know the, if you put it on drag race mode, you know, it tells you that it's preparing for, to, for drag race and all that. I don't see any of that because the steering wheel blocks it. I actually prefer the Model 3 with nothing in front of you and everything in the center. I never thought I would say that, but I actually kind of like that better. Um, anyway, so it's just, it is what it is, right? And then the brakes in the Model 3 were, is a harder pedal and it felt like it was better brakes, but by the numbers, it was like three feet shorter to sit from like 70 miles an hour, but from 100 miles an hour, this is 10 feet shorter. So I, I guess this does stop quicker. That was before the 23 model where it got the uh, the red calipers. And everybody knows that the color red makes the car stop better. Okay, now, um, it also got a higher heat compound on there, so it should be better at higher speeds. I wish they would have gotten bigger brakes, but you know, everybody says it needs bigger brakes. So it did come with Michelin tires, the, the P4S, not the, um, not the P0s. I was surprised. I thought it would be coming with the P0s, which I actually liked. And let's see what else. The sound system is marginally better than the Model 3 Performance and the Model 3 Long Range. Uh, the Model 3 uh, Standard Range uh, does not have a subwoofer. Um, i trying to think. The compartments in the, in the center console and all that, those doors that slide back and forth, they feel really cheap and they sound kind of cheap. The Model 3 was a little smoother. And then I had the added in bins, which used to be standard, but they're not optional. This one doesn't have that, so it kind of wastes the center console under the armrest a little bit because it's deep, but there's no second shelf. But uh, you do have that on the front one. So I was able to fit everything I needed in there, and it's fine. It's, it's not a big deal. It's just a difference. I do like the carbon fiber better than it would on this car. The dash looks nicer overall. Uh, the rear seats were actually found to be more comfortable in the Model 3. These are kind of hard and uh, kind of funny position. The headrests are very hard. My daughter didn't like hitting her head on it when I accelerated, you know, sorry. Um, so the new Model 3 has a rear screen and also loses the stalks. So, you know, reality is I would have gotten the new Model 3 performance if I hadn't gotten this. So I would have lost the stalks anyway. Um, what else? The handling, this definitely has a nicer ride. It, I have it on the lowest setting for the suspension and I have it on, on the hardest ride and best handling because that's what I like, you know, I, would, I like sports cars, if you couldn't tell in the back wall. Um, so it's a big four-door sedan, but it kind of feels like a sports car when you have it set that way. And it does have the 21-inch wheels, a pretty quick turn-in. Thank goodness the, um, the tires actually stick out a little bit more than the wheels. So hopefully it'll be a little more forgiving if you get too close to a curb. Model 3 is whew, a little tough with that, the stretch tires. The headlights, I think the headlights of the Model 3 might have been slightly better. Um, this it had, it had a sharper cutoff. It had that matrix headlights. I'm not sure if this has a matrix headlights, but um, you know, it's um, they look better, I think, but I'm not sure. It's real close. They're not bad lights by any means. Um, but um, yeah, the Model 3 performance gives you a lot of car. The primary reason I got this, because it's applied, because it's so fast. And I don't regret that. Um, whenever I have a big expenditure, I always have um, buyer's remorse. So for the next few days, it's going to be like, 
geez, did I really do the right thing? Model 3 performance gave you so much car. So bottom line is, if you're in a market to get a, uh, a Tesla and you're thinking about doing a stretch for the Plaid, but you're not really sure, and I would say wait for the new Model 3 performance is going to have one of the Plaid motors in the back. The rumor has it. So it's going to be like a mid 10 second car and it's going to be probably 2.9 or so to 60. So, you know, until it comes out, we're not going to know, but that's what I keep finding on YouTube. And, um, you know, if you're not, if you don't have to have the fastest production car made today, that would be the option I would go with. If there was a Plaid Model 3 and a Plaid Model S in the exact same performance, I would get the Plaid Model 3. So... But realistically, with this extra space and being a hatchback, that don't actually help with my business because I do use it, you know, to, uh, when I go to work and stuff. And, and um, you know, it fits more stuff in it, which is which would be good when you lay the seats down and all that. I can fit bigger things in it. Um, the real big jobs, I just take the van. But anyway, um, it, it's definitely a nicer car. Uh, the, the materials and all that, it just seems nicer on the inside. And if I sound like I'm a little disappointed, I'm not. I'm just tired. It's been a long day. And uh, tomorrow it gets inspected. And like I said, the weekend to Tuesday it gets the PPF. And then I'm, I'm ready to go. I was able to get all the little things I like to do on there pretty quickly because i done it recently and I already knew what I wanted to do ahead of time. And it doesn't really need much. My biggest worry was removing the front license plate bracket. I'm glad that turned out well. And... You know, I, I, I'm not really going to hammer on it until I have about 500 miles on a car. I just want to make sure that everything is seated with the brakes and tires are worn in. And, you know, just um, just to, to be, I don't want to hurt the car. But it's scary in the sense that the Model 3 Performance would like, bolt you to 60 and then it would kind of calm down a little bit. This doesn't. This at any moment you hit the gas, man, it slams you back and it hurts. Like if you're not, it hurts as if like, you know, your head hitting the seat actually gives you a headache if you're not prepared as, as a passenger. Um, and it just never gives up. But the, here's the scary part. When you do that, when you accelerate, you get up to speed so quickly, but because the car's quieter, you don't really notice it as much as you did in the Model 3. So you can get up to 90 miles an hour, let's just say theoretically, on the street. Uh, I'm not saying I did that because I would never do that. Um, but you can see, I can see a case where you can get up to 90 miles an hour in, a, in an un un unbelievably short time in small space. And you're like, how, oh my gosh, how did I get there? You know, so it, it can get, it's not that it gets out of control, but it gets up to speeds very quickly. And things at high speed happen very quickly. So if you're an inexperienced driver, like, you know, teenage kids, um, you know, you can be going down a 35 mile per hour road at 100 miles an hour, not even notice at first. You're going to notice you're going fast, but you, not, you may not realize you're going that fast. So that's the scary part about the car. It is that it does build speed tremendously fast. And, and in any car at speed, you know, things happen quickly. So... That's something to keep in mind, you know, it's, um, it, but like, you don't have to drive like a maniac at any moment when you're driving it, you know, if you want to go from 40 to 50, and you, you know, you, you can get there in a, in, in a split second, you know, it's just like, you know, 30 to 70 or whatever, you know, merging to a highway, you know, you, you, it's, it, it's super cool that way that it doesn't run out of breath as quickly as the Model 3 did. Um, you know, all of this I knew beforehand, you know, so it was. It was cool. Um, I do like it. Uh, this piano black stuff, you know, this and this and, you know, this and all this, I think that needs to go away. Um, this is more of what I like, you know, the satin black. And that's what the Model 3 had. The Model S, I'm not sure why I didn't realize it had this glass. So that's, this is glass, so that's fine. But um, I'm not into the piano black. And the back diffuser has also got the piano black. I think the flat black or satin black would be better like the wheels the wheels are kind of like a dark gray satin i think all of the trim should be should be like that um you know just little details nitpicking you know but overall i think it's a super nice car um if you need to have the ultimate performance from tesla this is it 
And, you know, if you just want high, high performance and then a very sporty car, Model 3 performance is it. So I think they're the two best cars that they make, in my opinion. Um, anyway, I'll keep making these videos as, as we progress here and uh, keep you up to date. Hope this is not too boring. And, um, you know, if you have any questions, let me know. And, oh, yeah, it does come with the uh, garage door opener, the home link garage door opener built in, which is nice. It, was an, it, was an, it used to be standard in Model 3. They took it away, and they had to buy a module that had them come install it. They had to remove the front and all that. I, it was like $350 or something like that. I decided not to do it because I just, you know, 3 m double-sided tape my little portable remote control behind the screen in my Model 3, and that's what I used. But it is cool that you pull up to the house and, you know, the little thing pops up on the screen. You just push the button on the screen and it opens the garage door. Or you can set it to do it automatically, open a door and then close the door as you leave. But as you see, I have one garage door. And when the angle I come into the house, and I can never tell until I'm right up on it, that uh, if it's open or closed. So, is that a bug? So, um, you know, if somebody's like, you know, has the the door open is coming in and out of that there's the car doesn't know the garage is already open so it'll just activate it and it'll close it i suppose the new myq systems which this one does not have um it senses if it's open or closed mine doesn't mine mine is just a standard standard newer opener but standard i didn't get the myq because i was concerned about you know having it online i don't like to have anything security related on the internet online because things get hacked all the time and I'm, IT, I'm an IT guy, so I prefer not to. I li Lights, thermostats, all that, no problem, but getting into your house, not so sure it's a good idea. Um, maybe it's a little bit paranoid, but it is what it is. So anyway, so I did notice one more last thing is that it's got 44% charge. I got it with 75% charge, drove it a little bit today and uh, put it to charge my same 20, 20 amps that I usually charge out to charge slower because I have all night. It certainly takes a lot longer to charge because it's a larger battery, 100 amp hour battery. So, um, and it's less efficient than the Model 3 as well. I believe the Model 3 was the equivalent of 150 miles per gallon. They call it MPGE. I think this one's like 107. So it's, it's definitely less efficient. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, keep you posted. See ya.